welcome for Courtney. How's it going? My mic's on? I'm heard. Um, I'm, I need to start with a disclaimer. I have a small headache. Last night was really fucking awesome um, at the party. We did not get to do, do regulators, but you know, we gotta do it next time for sure. Um, and my, <laughs> my second disclaimer is that someone in this audience has already seen me give this talk before, and they came up to me last night and was like, I saw you give this talk, and I was like, that wasn't me. I have no idea, because I, for the number one rule that I was a little bit wasted. Um, so I apologize that you are seeing this talk for a second time, but I'm, I, hopefully I'll make it a little bit better. Um, so my name is Courtney Ziegler. I am the co-founder of Blackstar Media, and we are an education company at our core. And we really focus on providing tools that are accessible to create all types of learning opportunities that for everybody, right? Specifically, we've been focusing on entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur myself. Um, my co-founder is an entrepreneur. And we came together to really focus on how we can... That's, that's us. <laughs> that's me, and that's my co-founder, Tiffany Michael. Um, we met about a year ago year and a half ago in Chicago. I am also the founder of TransHack. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it's a hackathon speaker series for trans people, um, a space to create technology for trans people. So I took it to Chicago and I met Tiffany Michael um, at Dev Bootcamp. She was on the founding team of, the, of DBC Chicago and she helped co-organize it. And so we were both doing our own thing. She was actually leaving her job and wanting to do, continue her consulting business. Um, I was self-employed and TransHack was my main thing. And she, after we had worked together, she was like, will you start a company with me? And I was like, no one's ever asked me to start a company with them. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Um, <laughs> so I have spent multiple, multiple years in school. I was in school majority of my life. I finished school at 29 years old. Um, along the way, I picked up multiple, multiple degrees. Um, so I am a traditional learner. I've been in the education space. Um, Tiffany is, uh, I guess her term is a self-directed learner, a very non-traditional education, education background, self-taught, um, went to IC Stars, which is a program that teaches uh, tech development. I'm, I hope I'm uh, uh, expressing IC Stars properly. But um, they teach technology skills to uh, underrepresented people. So she went through that program and became a developer and spent the past 10 years being a developer while I was doing the past 10 years in school. So when she came to me and said, we should start a company, my first idea was like, well, fuck yeah, of course. Um, we're both, we both love education, but how do we now put, put our two backgrounds together? Um, so we came up with Blackstar Media. Like, what kind of tech ed product do we want to create? <laughs> Again, so we started looking at different models um, and different spaces of spaces that provide education. And one of the things that we, that we knew that we wanted to offer was experiential learning. Um, and we wanted to really solve the problem of, of the idea that learning is kind of put into this box of like what, is, what the content is about, right? So here, like for example, uh, Tiffany gave me this example yesterday, actually. For example, if you're teaching someone JavaScript, there's a certain formula, there's this method of what the, the language is about, right? And this idea that everybody can learn it, right? But that, while that may be true, we're not really focused on the so what and the now what, which really means like now that you have this skill, what can you do with it? Um, what can you build? What type of technology uh, is going to, what type of technology can you build that may create a social impact or that may be useful for the community that you're from? And being who we are, um, Tiffany and myself, we come from different kinds of communities. We are, I guess in tech, considered underrepresented, right? Um, and so we wanted to create an experience, experiential learning space that offered, that, uh, that appealed to underrepresented people um, and that was very accessible and answered the so what and the now what. And uh, I am probably going too fast um, and I'm a little bit nervous for some reason, so I'm gonna slow it down a notch and grab my marbles together. Um, so. Again, so we were focusing on experiential education, and we were, again, trying different models. We were looking at Creative Live, um, spaces like General Assembly, Lynda.com, and all these other tech ed spaces that provide education um, and really try to be accessible, but aren't necessarily succeeding in multiple ways. And so we were like, well, what can we do? So we tried the Creative Live model format, Creative Live for Black People, which is what we called it. Um, that's me giving our, our first, uh, it was our MVP, so it was our first lecture. Um, and I was talking about research, uh, I even forget what I was talking about, research with a PhD or something. Um, and what happened at that space, it was on-site and online. So while I was giving the, the course on-site, 
um, Tiffany was moderating our online audience, and we had a virtual audience. Um, we also tried to do in-person collaboration, which is the picture on the left, um, the bottom left. Uh, through a program with DBC, we started called Inclusive Dev, which was really focused on making uh, develop, the, the, de 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 development space, say that five times fast, um, making the development space more accessible for people of color. So we partnered with DBC and created Inclusive Dev, and it was a supplement to their curriculum to help their students complete the boot camp. And so we did on-site um, code pairing, um, brown bag lunches, just providing a space for people to talk about whatever they were getting through to, to help them complete the program. We were also trying to do completely virtual interactions. So we held weekly Google Hangouts with people um, using just basic Google Hangout platform. Um, we would have technology entrepreneurs share their stories um, and have maybe about 10 people in this kind of exclusive setting be able to ask questions and do whatever they want to. And I apologize, I'm sweating. It's fucking hot in Nashville. So <laughs> um, I think we're all sweating, so I really don't apologize. So let me go back to that slide. Um, while we were in this space, what we noticed is that the virtual space, the online space, we, we received lots of traction. Um, the on-site curriculum that we were developing was really great. But we weren't able to have a, we wanted to have a wider reach, and we really wanted to be more accessible and engaging um, and be more inclusive. And so what we learned is that uh, the online space allowed us to be more malleable in that way. Um, so we were like thinking that, okay, now that we figured out that we really want to be, an, uh, want to produce a product, a tech ed product that's about virtual online learning collaboration, we're like, now what can we do? So we were like, what does, a platform look, what does a platform look like that provides meaningful education for underrepresented learners? And we're like, OK, what can we do? Let's take inclusive dev to the next level. So we ended up uh, having the first ever virtual conference for tech entrepreneurs. I don't know if anybody went to it. Um, but it was called Inclusive Dev. And we had it in March of this year. Um, and this is the platform we developed. We actually, let me go back to this slide. So while we're. We were thinking about how to, to test out this, this space of online learning. Um, we again looked at other platforms uh, like Adobe Connect, um, figuring out Crowdcast, I think. Um, what else did we look at? A number of other kind of web webinar, web software kind of things, but they really weren't what we needed. For example, live captioning and things like that weren't available. So we're like, we should make it ourselves. So we hacked this together. Um, you can actually go to learnbiz.black and look at, it's a, look at the, the conference platform is still up. Um, and we had a virtual conference for tech entrepreneurs, the whole tech ecosystem, which was super amazing. Um, it was a one day, four day conference. We had 30 plus speakers from across the country and across the world, actually. Um, and we had over 100 people engaged for the full time. Um, for four hours, which is really amazing. Um, I was in my home in Oakland. Tiffany was in her home in Chicago. Um, we had speakers in New York, DC, all kinds of places, and they were all on our platform in one day. And it was super amazing. And one of the, we learned really important things, actually, at this conference um, about online learning and collaboration. And the first thing that we learned that was the most important when developing our product was to be mindful, um, and to be mindful about the design. So for example, I was saying we, we, we looked at like Adobe Connect and all these uh, kind of other web services thing, but they were ugly. <laughs> um, no offense if anybody uses Adobe Connect. Um, they, were, they, they were not very pretty, and I think that when it's not very pretty, it's not very engaging sometimes. So we wanted to have design that was engaging and mindful of, of different kind of participants. Um, so I'm sorry I'm going back and forth through slides. Um, so as you see, on, on, this is what the platform looks like. The little iPhone is, we made it mobile responsive. Uh, our design, it was important for people to have, to be able to, to be able to access our conference in a mobile format. Um, we were also very mindful of making it primarily white space because when we think about reading on the computer, we think about it's, it's much easier for people with different kinds of eyesight levels. Um, I'm almost legally blind, actually, and I wear contact lenses. And so for me, when I'm looking at things online, I need to have a black text on a white background. Um, and I think a lot of other people need to have that. It was also, you can also change the colors if you want it to. So things like that. We're also mindful of the time. So our conference, uh, we held it on a Sunday morning to afternoon. We are a secular country, right? So we thought it would be 
because the workday, people work, the work days can be long, we thought a weekend conference would be great. And a weekend conference on a Sunday would have as, we were hoping to have as many participants as possible. Which it worked out really well because we were able to have, again, as many speakers donate their time to participate. Um, and we were also able to have more, sorry about that, um, participants because it did happen on Sunday. We were also mindful of the price. Uh, we, I think we charged $30 for uh, almost five hours of business education content, which was amazing, um, which is something that we, we really value. Making education accessible um, by price is really important. Uh, specifically, if in, in the tech industry, when a lot of spaces are kind of exclusive to people who maybe cannot participate because of price, we really wanted to make, to kind of challenge that and, and then also test an assumption that you can offer something of value and it can be affordable, right? The second thing that we were really, that we learned from our conference uh, to, to create our conference platform was to make it engaging. And our content was engaging. And our content was engaging not because it was just business education, but our people. Um, we had a diverse range of speakers. We had a diverse range of tech professionals. So we had people who were coders. We had people who were CEOs. We had people who were just marketing people. Um, but we had a variety of perspectives to really fill out the tech the tech ecosystem, so I already did that. And the space was engaging. Um, as you saw from the slide, I, I wish I actually took more screenshots, and that's why I apologize. Um, so with our conference platform, we, again, we wanted to be aware that everybody learns differently, and, and everybody collaborates online differently. So we were really mindful of creating a space where if someone is watching uh, the, the lecture being held, um, or maybe they couldn't watch it or something, they can also engage, we had polls, uh, uh, live polls that we can, can interact with the audience. We had uh, live captioning on demand. So if you weren't able to watch or you, had, you were hard of hearing, hard of seeing, we, had, we kind of covered those things. And that was really important for us, um, again, to make it very accessible. And we were very grateful because after the conference, multiple people reached out and said, thank you for you know, being inclusive of us um, for that matter. Future steps, right now we are taking our MVP um, to a product. So that was our MVP. It was literally uh, hacked together um, using, I think, PHP, some JavaScript, and WordPress. I did that great. Um, and we literally made it overnight. Um, and it was super cool. So our future steps right now is to actually build out our platform um, through online design sessions we're holding, and we're also going to hold a virtual hackathon in October, November of this year to really test out to see how we can like scale online collaboration. Um, that's it. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I'm sweaty and a little bit hungover. <laughs> um, but you can check us out. Uh, please go to learnbiz.black. Again, that's where our conference platform is up at. And you can see how it worked out. Um, the videos are still there. You can kind of like re-participate in the conference. And I would also like to point out uh, we held two, so we, had, we held inclusive dev about tech entrepreneurship, and then about three weeks later, we held another one. Um, and GitHub was our partner. And so I really love GitHub, and they really supported what we're doing at Blackstar Media and, really, um, and the work that we're doing to really trying to improve online collaboration. So I wanted to give that shout out to GitHub, and yay. Thank you. Thank you.